So the Agon Cell GX2 will utilize two different types of PWMs. Both functionally are the same and they both plug in the same. The only difference is the amount of lights that are on them. So we'll start with the first version that has five lights on it. So mounted on this GX2 version is that PWM. And this is what the PWM looked like. Uh, this smaller two pin plug right here will be your PWM connection coming from your rate controller. And then you will have your power cable and then the cable to go to your pumps. So looking at the lights on here, you should always have this green light on. This green line, this green light would mean that you have 12 volts going to the PWM. Uh, so you will always want this on unless if you actually unplug it, that's the only time that green light should be off. Looking at this clear bulb right here, uh, this will always be off until you actually turn the pump system on. Once the pump system is turned on, that clear bulb will start flashing blue. So if I press the start of my controller here, and we look at this PWM, it was just off before, but now it's flashing blue, and of course the pump system is running. The next light that you'd be looking for is all the way on the end. It is this orange light here, and this orange light will only come on again when you turn on the pump system and that's just getting feedback from the pump saying that the system is on. So if I once again turn on the pump system, you'll see once the pump starts going, this orange light down here turns on, and that just means that the system is running. So uh, when you're running the system normally, you should see the green light for power, meaning you're getting 12 volts of the PWM, your flashing blue light is feedback, meaning that the PWM is getting a signal from the rate controller to turn on and run, and then your orange light, meaning that your pumps are actually on, and your PWM is giving feedback saying your pumps are putting product out. The next two lights that you'd be looking at is what you would use more for troubleshooting. So you have this red light here, and that red light can do two different things. If it's flashing red, that means you have an open circuit. So chances are it would be a issue with your harnessing, either if it's pinched somewhere, your harnessing is cut, um, it's pulled too tight somewhere, or maybe even a bad power source and that can cause the red light to flash. If it comes on solid, that means you have an overcurrent, so you probably have too much power going to it. You know, two of the wires, your, your hot and ground line could be touching each other. Um, and then you would also have issues with uh, burning of the end, so you might even see a little bit of uh, burnt plugs. That's another thing to look for as well if you're not getting a good connection. The next light in line will be your yellow light. If it's flashing yellow, that means the temperature on the PWM is starting to rise, it's starting to overheat once it's solid. That means the PWM should be shutting off because at that point it has overheated. So that is what these five lights mean. And we'll go to the next PWM. And this would be the second version of the PWM that AgExcel offers. Uh, functionally, it's still the same. The plugins are still the same. So it's just your lights are different. So you have the center light here and the center light when your pump is in standby mode. So when your master switches off, it's always going to be flashing the steady red, just a simple on, off, on, uh, steady flashing. And that just means, again, the system's in standby, it's waiting to be told to do something. When the system is actually running, uh, this red light, the center red light will turn solid, and then your corner red light will also turn solid as well. So when I start the system here, you'll see my center light is solid, and now my corner light is solid as well. And then again, when I stop the system, it'll go back to a simple flash. So that will be your normal operation. What you'll see in some troubleshooting scenarios is when the center light is flashing real quick. Uh, typically, that's a power issue. It could be with your harnessing. So either you're not getting enough voltage to the PWM. It could also be an issue where when these pumps get old to about four to five years old, what they'll do is they will start to draw more amperage than what the PWM can provide and it'll start to shut the system off. And the center light will either flash constantly um, if that is the case, or sometimes it'll do four flashes, then a pause, and then four flashes and a pause, uh, pretty quick flashes. So that uh, could be another issue if your pumps are getting old and starting to go bad. And then another thing that could happen as well, if you're not getting enough power to the PWM when you're driving, maybe it's okay when you're sitting still, but once you start driving, the issue occurs make sure that you have enough voltage going to the PWM, that the PWM is plugged into the battery of the tractor. You don't want to plug into the cab or anywhere else because what will happen is when you're sitting still, you're fine. But once you start driving is when you start to have problems. Uh, 
Also make sure that your pins are pushed in tight. Go ahead and pull the wires, give them a little bit of force, make sure they don't pop out on the end. But also check the pins to make sure they're not corroded or burnt on the power side or even go into your pump. Uh, same thing on your PWM plug. You wanna make sure they're clean connections and you have no debris in the way that can cause that issue. Also make sure none of your harnesses are damaged, um, pinched, cut, pulled too tight, because that can also cause those issues to happen as well. And this is the GX5 uh, PWM. And this is the only version of PWM we have. This is used in all the hydraulic pumps that we offer. This is where your two pin PWM plug will go into. Uh, this is your solenoid. This red button here that goes through the PWM is your manual override. Looking at the back side here, uh, this P will be your inlet, this T will be your outlet, this is a pressure compensation valve, and then this will be your bypass valve. So commonly when looking at the PWM when you have issues, the first thing I like to do is I like to run the pump in the manual override state to see if there's an issue with the electronics or if it's something with the pump itself or the hydraulics or this block itself. So what I like to do is first turn my hydraulics on my tractor down to 10% or down to 1, push down on this red stem, turn it counterclockwise a half rotation, and then you'll hear it click and it'll pop up. You can see here it's kind of slowly rising up. This means the block is going to run purely off hydraulics. It's going to ignore all electronics. It's only going to run off of what hydraulics are being given to it. So once you do that, you're going to start to throttle your hydraulics up higher and higher and higher until you start to see what your issue is. Let's say if your pump is surging and it's not surging when your manual override valve is up and it's running purely off hydraulics, but it surges whenever you try to run it through your rate controller, then we know it's an electronics issue. If it's still surging now when you have your override stem up, then we know that it could be an issue with either your hydraulics or it could be an issue with maybe the valve itself or it also could be an issue with your plumbing or your pump itself. So just repeat or just do the opposite of what we did before. If you want to go back to your, your electronic control, push down, turn it clockwise, half rotation, and then it'll uh, lock into place. Now the way this will operate is when your PWM sends voltage to your solenoid here, the solenoid will start to magnetize and that is what will pull the stem up and it pulls the stem up so far and it allows so much hydraulic flow to go through and that's how you get uh, locked into your target rate. So say if I was having an issue where I press go on my pump but my PWM isn't running, go ahead and take this nut off here and then you can take the solenoid off. And inside the solenoid there's this black piece, kind of a polymer inside. What this is is a coil. So this will magnetize. So what you can do is while your PWM is still plugged in and you hit your master switch on, just grab a screwdriver, stick it in there, and feel if it's magnetizing. If you don't feel it magnetizing, then you're probably not getting voltage uh, to the solenoid. And at that point, take off the PWM plug, put a voltmeter in it, and see if you have voltage going on your PWM line. Or else if you do feel it magnetizing, then that means your solenoid um, is getting the voltage it needs and it should be pulling the stem up. At that point, you could be having an issue with the stem itself and you might need to replace it or the stem could be stuck. Sometimes what will happen with these stems as well, if these sit outside or if they've been used for several years, uh, dirt will start to build up in here and or it can start to rust a little bit and these stems uh, will start to just get stuck closed. So something else that you can do is you can even take the stem off, make sure all your hydraulics are off. You don't want to run this while you have the stem off. Once you get this stem unscrewed, uh, this is what the whole stem body looks like from here. Uh, you can push down on it and pop it up. And what you can even do is you can start to play with this. Uh, just start to get whatever dirt is stuck inside here. Just try to get that out as much as you can. Make sure this O-ring is also in good condition as well. This will seal uh, when it sits in your PWM block here. So there's nothing notable that you can really see even on the inside of this when they are uh, bad. It's just, uh, you just wanna make sure this is clean here because again, if this is not clean, this can stop your stem from coming up. When you put your stem back on, and then you put your solenoid back on, it just slides right over. And then this nut, it's only threaded on one side, 
It's not threaded on the other side, so it can only go on one way. When you put this on, don't make it real tight either, because what'll happen if you tighten this too tight, uh, then these coils on the bottom, you'll start to smash them against the bottom of the manual override valve, and uh, you'll have less coils there, so it'll limit how much the stem will come up, if it even brings the stem up anymore. So make sure you only get it about hand tight. It's okay if the solenoid still moves a little bit, but just about hand tight is about all you want. Again, you don't want to damage those coils. Uh, looking back here at this pressure compensation valve, the main thing that I'm looking for is this number right here. It says 160. All the new versions uh, should have a 160 on there. Some of the real old pumps that have an 80, and what will happen is when this pressure compensation valve goes bad, you'll lose half of the rate that your pump can apply at. If that's the case, likely could be the pressure compensation valve, and that can just be easily switched out for another one. And then another piece right here on this right side of the block when your hydraulic hose is plugged in the back. Uh, you can take this cap off, and this will lead you to your bypass valve. This is an Allen head that's in here, and then you have a lock nut that's on there. Uh, if you're running the pump in parallel with something, go ahead and keep this closed. Uh, if you're running a closed center system, you can keep this closed. If you're running an open center hydraulic system, go ahead and open this up. Or if you're running it in series with something else as well, uh, go ahead and open this valve up and just open it to about as much as you need so you can have a bypass. So if you were to have a situation where you deadhead, and your hydraulics don't know where to go, you're not blowing any hoses. Then once you lock that in place, make sure you put your cap back on uh, to keep the dirt out of it, but also so that it doesn't come out of place. On the flow meters that we use on both the GX2 and GX5 uh, series of pumps, you'll see that there's this red light on the side. It's normally pretty dim, so you might want to put both your hands over it. Uh, but you can see in this case my red light is on and it's on solid. That means I am getting 12 volt to my flow meter right now, so that's good. Uh, when I run the system, you'll see this red light will start flashing. And when it's flashing, that means it's actively reading liquid that's moving through it. So if you know for sure that you have liquid going through it and you don't have any air bubbles going through your manifold as well, because the flow meter won't read air, it'll only read liquid. So if you have air going through this system and the pumps are on, um, your light won't flash and you won't see any flow on your monitor but if you know for sure you have only liquid going through it and this light isn't flashing it's possible you could have an issue with your harnessing you know, your signal wire somewhere or an issue with the flow meter itself now if you have liquid going through it and your flow meter light isn't even on your pump is probably applying a full blast because your system thinks if I'm not reading enough flow I'm just gonna apply at a higher rate so then uh, you'll be getting full flow out of that pump so if that light is not on, then you probably have a power issue. Check your harnessing. Make sure you have 12 volt going to the flow meter. The flow meter has to have 12 volt to operate. Or you could also have an issue with the flow meter itself. If you're having an issue on the GX5 or the GX2 series of pumps where you are not getting the flow rate you should be getting, check your manual override valve here. Your manual override valve should be threaded in all the way, so towards the body. There's this lock nut on here. You can make sure it's threaded in all the way. But if this is threaded out, what will happen is when you start to go inside the pump and then you come out of the pump, uh, your flow will start to come in through this manual override valve and this three quarter inch hose goes back to the inlet. So all you're going to be doing is just recirculating flow throughout the pump. So again, make sure you have this closed all the way. It will also bring your pressure up and then go ahead and lock this into place. On the GX2 series of pumps, you have the same gray handle here, same exact thing. Uh, you have a three quarter inch hose back here that goes into your inlet filter. Uh, go ahead and again, just make sure that it's closed all the way. If this valve is open, you'll lose ray going out to your rows. You will also lose pressure. So you will normally always want to keep this closed. On the GX2 series of pumps, you have this red handle here. On the back, uh, we normally have a plug on there when we ship it but it is possible that you might have put a stem fitting in there and then ran a 3 8 hose either back to the inlet of the system or you might have ran it back to the tank if you're doing some sort of agitation setup. Uh, but just like the other valves, even though it looks different, it's the same functionally, so just make sure that this is also closed all the way. And if you're having an issue where if your electric pumps that you're using, they're running for a bit and then they're just shutting off right away and then you have to reboot the system or maybe you have to unplug the PWM and plug it back in, shut off your master switch and shut it back on for the pumps to run again just to only shut off again pretty quick. What will happen is when these electric pumps get old, typically around four to five years old, 
Uh, that's your average lifespan of the pump. And what happens is these pumps, they start to draw more amperage than what the PWN can provide them. And because of that, they overheat and then they shut off. So if that's the case, at that point, you just have to get a new pump. They're 5.3 gallon per minute, 12 volt pumps. Uh, we have replacements on hand and we can get those out to you real quick.